Hello everyone, I'm Melanie from Bake a Leg and Let's Dig It Homestead, and I am getting ready to make Christmas crack. I've never made it before, maybe you have, so I thought for the people that have not made it, we could do it together. Um, it looks pretty yummy and very interesting, and yeah, I want to make something different for, you know, little nibblers for Christmas. So it's saying 30 to 40 saltine crackers on either parchment paper or foil lined cookie sheets. So let's get started with the saltine crackers. I'm really not sure how many saltine crackers are in a sleeve, but I guess we will find out because we're gonna do these together. It says to put them all in a row. Let me double check. Um, Okay, so it says to preheat the oven to 300. I did that. Um, one inch pan with parchment paper or foil, or you can use a silicone mat. Line up crackers in a single layer in rows on the prepared sheet. Okay, and that's what we're gonna do. Let me open this a little bit better so the crackers don't end up breaking. I have two sleeves out just in case. I'm interested, in, very interested in trying this. So, if any of you have had this before, is that backwards? I guess it doesn't matter. Um, if anyone has tried this, please leave me a comment down below and let me know if this is if this is a regular holiday tradition that you make this. Now, I used to make something called reindeer poop. It's done in a crock pot and it has um, like the bark chocolate with lots of peanuts. That's amazing, but I'm not going to make that this year. I want to try this and I am going to put out some other recipes, just maybe not a ton. Some of my cookies I make and whatnot, I definitely will post and hopefully you're seeing that. So this is just regular saltine crackers. Um, the recipe, I just pulled it up on Google. And I'm very curious to see how this is and how it turns out. So it's just me, Jimmy, and the dogs here. We were out Christmas shopping today. And I need to get my bait game on because I am behind. So we did some of that. Right now, I'm just layering them. I don't know what you do with the sides right here. Don't know. But this is the size pan that it requires. So maybe if there's any broken ones like this, maybe I could fit it in there like that. We're just going to keep layering the crackers. It says 35 to 40. So I would say you're going to be opening up two sleeves of saltine crackers. And what I think I'm going to do is any of these. Oh, that's a smaller piece. Okay. Let's open up the next one, but I am going to try to fill in the gaps on the side. Hmm. I think some of it may have to overlap on the end here. I don't know if this is the exact measurement of the pan that was required, but it said it doesn't have to be very specific. So we're going to wing it, folks, 
And I think that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to double the bottom that has this gap right here and just put an extra saltine cracker. I think I'll eat that one. So I figure for the people that maybe never made this before, we would do this step by step together. Okay, there's the cracker. They are all done. And as you can see, as I'm crunching on the cracker, I just double layered, you know, that end. Okay, first step is done. I'm using Jimmy's spoon. For the actual recipe. Um, okay. Next, we're going to use, you can use a candy thermometer, it says if you have one. We're going to melt the butter and brown sugar in a small saucepan, bring it to a boil, and boil for two to three minutes. So I'm going to bring you over here. Oven, as you can see, is on 300. Okay. So, melt the butter, brown sugar in a small saucepan, bring it to a boil for two to three minutes. Immediately pour over the crackers and spread evenly. Okay, so, let's go to the actual, I think it's two sticks, but I want to make sure I'm precise. 35 to 40 saltine crackers, one cup of butter, which is two sticks, one cup of brown sugar, which I already have that measured out, and one and a half cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. I also have that measured out. So, let's turn the oven on and get two sticks of butter inside the saucepan. too high to start with. This is salted butter, by the way. It's not unsalted. I do have it, but I didn't take it out of my freezer. So we're going with regular butter. Okay. That is the two sticks of butter. And then it's saying one cup of brown sugar. So, um, melt the butter and brown sugar in a small saucepan. So let's turn this up a little bit. Um, it does say you can use a candy thermometer if you have one. I don't have one. So it says, meanwhile, using a candy thermometer, melt the butter and brown sugar in a small saucepan, bring it to a boil for two to three minutes. So let's, this is one cup of brown sugar. I think I'm going to be using a wooden spoon. We're going to let that start to melt and then I'll time it for two to three minutes. Uh, let's get out a spatula because once it's done, melt it for the length of time. You need a spatula to smear it all over the crackers. So that's out. It definitely says to pour it immediately over the crackers and spread evenly with the spatula. You're going to bake it for five minutes or until the candy hardens. Um, and then remove it from the oven. So let's do this. I'm interested to see how this turns out how it tastes this is my fast burner um on my stove so it tends to cook pretty quick this is almost going to be like a caramel sauce i could tell you that already i just want to get out any lumps there is in the brown sugar but i do keep terracotta in there so I don't get very many lumps. Right, we're just chopping the butter down a little bit so it melts. So 
So as soon as that is fully melted, oh yeah, that just touched the stove. As soon as that's fully melted, then we're going to have to stand here and stir it. For the two to three minutes, so. My oven is smoking a little bit because I just, well, my stove, because I just got a little bit of it on there. So we're just going to keep stirring. I'll bring you back as soon as the butter melts. Okay, it's starting to come to a boil, as you can very well see. And now we have to time it, bring it to a boil, and boil for two to three minutes. So... Yeah, that might help. Thanks, Jim. You just put a light on. Did I do the timer right? Let me see. Let me get it to three. No, because now the timer just went off. Let's see. Timer. I'm trying to stir this and do the timer at the same time, folks. Three. Time three and the light's blinking, let's see. So we're just going to keep stirring it. I can bring a little bit closer so you can see. I think it's going to be like almost like a caramel sauce. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. So I guess I'll do the boring part and we'll continue to stand here and just keep stirring this for two to three minutes. And this is going to change in color. It's going to get darker. So it's just patience. I'm going to have to stand here and keep stirring. So that's the boring part for you guys. I'll bring you back as soon as we move on to the next step. Okay, I wanted to bring it back just so you can see how the color is changing. So we're not done with the timer. I'm just standing here stirring. You didn't miss anything exciting. And I did double check. It does say medium heat and cook for two to three minutes keep your eye on it and watch for the mixture to darken so that's what's happening definitely be careful with this because you do not want to get burned using Jimmy's spoon to keep an eye on make sure I'm doing it right. So it says on medium. Yeah, it's on medium. It does say be careful when you're pouring it over the crackers. And that looks pretty dark to me. As it will get darker. Okay. Let me fix this to three hundred. Look at how much darker that is, everyone. Can you see that? Oh boy, now I'm going to have to move you back over to here and hope to goodness that this is still bubbling and it's pretty dark. So it says to pour it gently over the crackers, so let's just go for it. Yeah, I think you definitely would not want to get burned by this. It's like a candy. 
and he would get seriously injured for sure. And if you're not sure about this, I would use a candy thermometer. So let's get it all out of here. And then we have to spread it. Okay, let's see all the spreading goes. Spread it all over. Because you can use a spatula. But I'm going to try with this spoon here. But I think you have to move kind of quick. It's starting to set up like very quickly. So let me use something else like a butter knife. We can get this all spread out. Like I said, this is my first time. As even as possible. We have some crackers down here that don't have paint on there. It's not looking very pretty right this minute. And it's probably also too because I have an extra layer. It's pretty thick, like a caramel. Let's see if I can scoop some up and get some on the other crackers. Don't forget, this is going to get covered with some chocolate. Be a little short on the extras that I did, but it is spread out. I think the best that it's going to be. Okay, now let's just spread it out. You have to put it in the oven for five minutes or until a candy thermometer reads to 300, 310. So on the stove off, let's put this in the oven. Oh, this is hot. Get it on one end. For five minutes. And after that five minutes, I will bring you guys right back. Okay, I figured since we're waiting for that in the oven, I put some pretzels in a baggie. You can use whatever you want. You can use M&M's. And we're just going to wax them. I'm going to let the air out of this baggie. They can be tiny pieces. They could be a little bit bigger. Well, up to you. How the pieces look. That looks pretty good to me. You can give it a crunch with your hands. That may go on one half. peanuts and raisins maybe on one section so let me open up this this is one of those power up packs power up doesn't have a ton in here but it has um, some sunflower seeds things like that 
because the pictures I saw, you can do like four different sections, however you want. So I think I'm going to bash this up a little bit. Some of the almonds and the peanuts. Make lots of racket. I know it's probably shaking the camera. I'm sorry. Okay, Jimmy just yelled my name twice at the five minute timer's up. So let's get this out. Let's see what it looks like. Now, let me get the chocolate ready and I'll bring it right back. Okay, so let me show you what it looks like. So it came out of the oven. There it is. I'm going to sit you right there for a minute because now what we have to do. Some people say they can, you can just scatter the chips or you can melt the chocolate. So I'm thinking that I may melt the chocolate. So let me get the chocolate, which is a cup and a half. Yeah, a cup and a half of semi-sweet chocolate chips. So I measure them out. There they are. What they're saying basically is you can pull it out of the oven and you can kind of go like this and it'll melt in. But I am only going to do a few like that because I am going to melt it in intervals. So let me put this in the microwave on 30 seconds. Only do 30 seconds at a time. That's melted. I will bring these all back. Okay, let me check the chocolate coming out of the microwave. Not melted all the way. Let me give it a stir. And this is going to have to go in for longer. Let's try another second. But as you can see, if you touch one of the chocolate chips on here, does actually melt. Let's see what happens. In more seconds, we'll stir it up. Okay, let's check it. starting to melt. So, back in it goes. I'm just taking off what was on the spoon that wasn't melted and dropping it on. So who else has made this the Christmas time? I never have. They say you can do sprinkles, you can do Oreos, I have Chips Ahoy, but I wasn't really sure how I wanted to do this, so. And that's Jimmy's friend that keeps calling, and I'm using Jimmy's phone for the recipe, so sorry guys. Let's stir this up. Almost there. And then I think all we have to do is just spread it across the top as best as possible. Almost melted. I'm going to give this about 20 more seconds, I think. I'll check in it everywhere. Let me see. 
Set this in like that. Only because it just needs to be a little bit more spreadable. With a close sign on it. Let's check that now. Looks like it's easy to pour. Everything's melted. It's not my phone. Like I said, I'm using my friend Jimmy's to keep an eye on the recipe. Pretty sure we just have to spread this all over. So here we go. chocolate out of there. Now we have to quickly try to spread it. Waste not, want not. It's all out of the bowl. The fun part is you get to lick the spoon. Or not. Let's see. Spread it as evenly as possible. I would honestly think that if you need more chocolate, it's not that big of a deal. You can melt a little bit more chocolate. I think this pan may have been a little bit bigger than the average pan. Sure, it's all covered with the chocolate. What if the dogs are watching me right now? Like, drop something. You don't want to drop chocolate with your dogs because it's not good for them. That looks not too shabby. I'm just using the back of a teaspoon to cover all of it. And I think that may be it. Okay, now Let's see, so you can leave the candy plain or top that melted chocolate and take it wherever you want with crushed Oreos, chopped nuts, you name it, press the pieces into the still warm chocolate using the flat side of a spatula. I'm going to use the flat side of a spoon. It says as the pan cools, the crackers will form a single sheet. <clears throat> you can break it up. And the jagged pieces. Okay. Let's go in with a little bit. I would say maybe pretzels on this half. Hopefully these pieces are not too big. I'm going to try to crumble them. So press it down with the back of the spoon. I guess if you have pieces sticking out. So I'm going to leave my spoon right there. And let's see how I do for the first time I'm making this. I think I just want to do maybe half. Or a quarter of pretzel. Let's see if I can do a straight line. Of pretzel. Let's see what else we can get into. 
I think the pretzels could have been a little bit smaller. That's okay. Press it down. And then what else can we put on here? Let's see, let me move this up a little bit closer to you. I don't know how this is going to taste. Let's do. Um, I don't know if there's enough to do a whole section. We'll see how far we get with this. I think some marshmallows in the middle would probably be really good. Maybe, maybe we could cover the middle. Let's see. We'll do half and half. Just as long as there's enough to cover it. And this is it, my friends. We did it. And now you can just put it in the refrigerator, let it get cold while well, I still have to push this side down. You can put it in the refrigerator, let it get cold. You can cut it into pieces from what I read, or you can just break it like a bark. And I've made bark plenty of times, but I just thought this would be different. Let's try to make some crack candy. There we go. Let's take the spoon, push it down. I'll be pushing it down so it don't fall off, I guess, when you bite it. It has raisins. Peanuts, almonds, broken up, some sunflower seeds, and there we go. So let me just double check. Um, we pressed the pieces down while it was still warm. As the pan cools, the crackers, crackers will form a single sheet. You can break it up to jagged pieces or cut it into squares with a heavy duty chef knife. So there you have it, everyone. This is my first time of making Christmas crack. And there it is. Hopefully the lighting is good and you can see that, but it's done. And yeah, I'm quite pleased with it. So thank you everyone for joining me on my very first time making Christmas crack. And um, I'm going to put this in the fridge, let this get cold. And I may cut it in squares if I want it to look super duper cute. But stay tuned because I'm going to make a two ingredient fudge. You don't want to miss that. Um, but there it is. This is the fruit and nut side. And there's the pretzel side. And that wasn't too hard or too complicated. And even I was scared. It was pretty easy. So there you have it. Give me a thumbs up. Happy holidays. Like I said, stay tuned for um, fudge that I'm going to be making and um, a few other quickie little cookie recipes. But until next time, God bless and happy holidays. And enjoy the Christmas crack.